Hello everyone, I hope that you are having an incredible day today. We're so glad that you decided to join us for this next episode of a setup for a comeback and also all encompassing our Red Sea Road podcast and video and really talking about how God uses impossible situations to show his incredible might, his incredible power and so glad that you decided to join us. I'm Sam, um, this is Ashley. This is Jono, the man in the corner, the man with the mask, um, the Google master. And today we have joining us Terry, a great friend of mine. So excited to have Terry on board. She joined us for the fireside chats quite a while ago. Yes. But now we are on these next episodes. And uh, glad to have you here, Terry. Thanks. It's awesome having you. I'm so glad to be here. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's it, it is really kind of fun to have new people on these podcast videos and to yeah. kind of hear a little bit of their story and hear like how God is working in their life and what God is doing in their life. Yeah. Yes. So I know that we're also approaching Christmas. And, you know, as we approach Christmas, um, uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but do you guys have any big plans for Christmas? Like cool places that you're going? We were just commenting on this uh <laughs> beautiful image that's on the screen behind us and how that makes us want to go to like Jackson Hole or skiing or something like that. You, you've been to Jackson Hole a couple times. Yeah, that's normally where we go at Christmas. Okay. As a family. It's kind of become like a family uh, a kind tradition. of tradition. Yes. Okay. And, and like what part of it, like what, what are the elements of it that you absolutely love? I think that Jackson Hole does a great job of bringing the joy of Christmas into the decor of their little town square. Right. And it feels so quaint and so small town. And I love the window shopping, mm -hmm. even though I can't afford to buy anything there. Right. <laughs> and the Yippee Yay Yo candy shop Same. would be what my kids highly recommend you can't miss when you're in Jackson Hole. The Yippee Yay Yo candy store. Really? Yeah. Yep. Like, so I'm plugging them. And, and like, like, what's it like? Like, it uh, is like going into the old time candy stores where they have big barrels full of candy, all kinds of different candy, even houndstooth, which I don't recommend. It doesn't taste very good, but you know, it brings back memories for my dad. So my dad likes to get it just because it brings back memories for him. Houndstooth? I've never heard of that before. It's it's not very good. Like, is it like some kind of like a licorice? It's or a something? hard candy. Okay. Oh. Houndstooth. Huh. That reminds me so much of when we went to Red Lodge on the charity ski trip, <laughs> and my mom would be so mad at how much candy I brought home. I would spend all my food money on candy. <laughs> but, yeah, Red Lodge has that same kind of like a place where yeah. it is this candy emporium that is like massive. Yep. What, you tell us about it. Like, what, what? Anyway, You walk in, and you're literally a kid in a candy store, so you're just like, <laughs> what can I get? And you fill your bag as full as you can. You put it on the scale. Give them, I gave them probably like 50 bucks too yep. much. But, <laughs> yeah. but that makes me so excited because I'm going to Jackson Hole the day after Christmas until New Year's. And it's my first time going. And I'm oh. a snowboarder, so I'm excited to right. go which, to the Tetons. Which place are you snowboarding at? Well, since I'm a broke college student, I will not be going to Jackson Hole. I'm going to Tarhee. Okay. okay. Yeah, because it's like 50 bucks cheaper a day. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's, what, what is there, like three different kind of resorts right around there or three different? Yes. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. one like directly in the city. It's like you don't even leave the city to get to it. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I think there's one that at like the called edge. Snow King or something yep. like that. Okay. And yep. then there's one at the edge. And then there's Targi, which is out of town a little ways. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that uh, that sounds awesome, Ashley. I know that uh, probably all of us, like if, if somebody in your family can't make it, you can invite all of us and, and we'll go. Sounds good. I'll keep yes. you in mind. Yeah, invite, absolutely. Uh, a, a kind of an extended invite right there. Yeah. We'll come and we'll make we'll ourselves part of your family. Yeah. You <laughs> I'd love that. Hey, do you have a hitch on the back of your vehicle? Yes. Because, like, I could hitch a wagon onto there and I'll just ride the wagon out there. 12 <laughs> hours. Isn't that how so long fun. the drive is? 12 hours? 
Oh, yes. it must be something like that. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. I actually love the drive um, from Bismarck to uh, Jackson Hole. I just think it's so beautiful. Anytime actually that I head west, uh -huh. I kind of feel like this sense of, of freedom, Me you know? Too. And then like you get like to kind of like Cody, Wyoming, and you know, there's this red rock around you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then I think that Jackson Hole, um, when you hit the Grand Tetons, there is something yeah. absolutely amazing wow. about the Grand Tetons. I mean, they, as far as like mountains go, they have to be some of the most beautiful mountains in the world. I think they are. Yeah. I mean, they're spectacular. Oh, they, are, they really are spectacular. And, you know, to get there, you drive through the park for a period of time to get there. So, right. like, not only do you have the beauty of the Tetons, but you drive through Yellowstone for a little ways to get there. Right. So it's, it's really a wonderful trip. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely love it. If anybody gets the opportunity to go to, go. to the Grand Teton National Park... But make sure you book rooms ahead of time because otherwise there will be no room in the inn. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, but like it's a yeah. it's a famous place and there will be no room in the inn. Is that like a, is that like a lead in into our, like our topic today? Like no room in the inn. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, yes, that's ironic. Yes, you is. say that. Yeah, isn't it amazing, is, boy? Funny how that comes up. <laughs> no room in the inn. Where where else do we hear that a part of that story? You know, yeah. But actually, that is true. Like when you go to uh, yes. Uh, Jackson Hole, you, you do have to kind of almost make arrangements a little bit in advance yeah. because I think it's a small enough town and like at certain times of the year, it gets like flooded with people. Yes. And not only that, but if you don't make plans ahead of time, the only place to stay is so expensive right. that you'd have to sleep on the streets. Mm -hmm. And that's no kidding. Like they're really expensive. <laughs> right. That's kind of like, you know, my experience sleeping on the street of Rome yeah. or, you know. Just be a little bit colder probably. Right. A little bit colder. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't advise it in Jackson Hole right now. Anyways. <laughs> no. You don't, you don't want a warm sleeping bag. You'd have to get really close to the people that you were there with, you know. You based, would. Yeah. To survive. Dog pile. Yeah. Dog pile. <laughs> That's what Mary and Joseph did. <laughs> Doc Pyle. Well, That's why it? the animals were with them. Maybe it was for warmth. I know, don't you? Yeah. Well, let's let, actually quit. We're gonna we're gonna talk more about this because I think that we're on to a good conversation here. I hope that you're enjoying this as well. But uh, anyways, um, the part of scripture that we're on is, and we're really talking about this Advent season and really celebrating the greatest gift of all in the in the birth of Jesus Christ. But what's interesting is that God used all these crazy situations to really reveal His hand and. Now we look back at it and we're like, what in the world was God doing? But we can see a little bit more of the picture than they probably could right then yes. and have a better understanding of what God was actually doing. But anyway, so we're looking in Luke 2 and we're looking at verse 4 through 7. And it says this, So Jesus, so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David. Because he belonged to the house and line of David, he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with, to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Like, I mean, okay, so like you're going to Jackson Hole um, with your family and stuff like that, and... Um, you know, looking forward to this experience and, and things like that. Can you imagine like Mary and Joseph, like, first of all, they find out that they're going to be, that Mary's pregnant with the son of God, right? An angel appears to Joseph, all that kind of crazy stuff. But can you imagine like, okay, do you think that they started to expect or have expectations of what that was going to end up looking like for them to actually have that son of God? Like, I mean, do you think that like, and maybe Terry, you can speak to this the most, um, because you have four kids of your own, mm -hmm. but like when you were coming close to the time of, of having your children, like, was there kind of an expectation in your mind of how that was actually going to go? Like what that was going to look like? Absolutely. There, uh, first of all, there was the expectation that I was going to get everything I wanted. <laughs> like I, the doctor even had me fill out a form. How do you want your birth to go? Mm. So I wrote down everything that I wanted, you know, I didn't want any drugs and I wanted to, you know, be in a certain birthing position and I wanted to not be laying flat on my back. Like I just had these preferences. And so, yeah, talk about an expectation. Right. Like it was laid out right there. My plan was all put together. Right. And then. And then what happened? <laughs> then <laughs> my water broke and my husband was, what husband? 
would be playing a game with their wife while she was pregnant and at the hospital about to give birth, and he would not let her win at cribbage. Uh, that's no my way. first question. So my expectation oh, Jason, I can't was that Jason. I should have totally been able to win that game. He should have just flopped. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, he should have let you win cribbage as you're getting ready right? to give birth. Right. Oh yeah. my yeah. goodness. And then when my water broke, because I was induced, because Jason was deployed. So my, first of all, I never imagined that when I had a baby, my husband would be deployed and have to schedule the birth, I didn't want to have to schedule the birth. I wanted it to come naturally, you know. Right. I had to schedule the, the birth. And then my husband left afterwards and had to go back. He had to go back. So that he was, was able- never a part of my dream. All right, yeah. So he was actually able, though, to come home for, yes. for that period and, and play cribbage with you. Yes. Okay. But he was still the Beat you in cribbage. And, yeah. Yeah, and he totally beat me in cribbage. <laughs> like, not just a little bit beat me. Like, he whooped me. Right, yeah. Yeah. And then when my water broke... I said, oh my gosh, my water broke. And I never pictured my husband would say, are you sure it's not just pee? <laughs> and I went, boys, seriously, <laughs> like, Men. yeah, me, I pee in my <laughs> pants. That's what, like, who says that? Right. Like I seriously, a hormonal woman in labor, uh, you know, I, I wanted to punch him. Right. That was <laughs> not my picture. Perfect birth. No, that, that was not a part of my expectation. Uh, Didn't go as planned. Uh, yeah. Jesus is making me so excited. <laughs> Someday. This is what you have to look forward to, Ashley. <laughs> I get a lot of this here. We better get her a cribbage game eventually. <laughs> I know, right? I'll teach her how to play so she can win. It's no, so funny. Jason better teach you. <laughs> when I think of like, if God told me I'm going to birth the savior of the universe, I'd be like, oh, I get like a palace. I get like the greatest doctor yes. in the world. Like I would get everything I want. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. And so like thinking of like Mary, like they're telling her like, Sorry, there's no room here. I'd be like, I'm birthing Jesus, but that's not how it went. Well, I mean, can you imagine like just kind of that set of expectations of like, okay, first of all, like nothing was going like planned. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, for, like for, for Mary to find out the way she did, for Joseph to find out the way he did, then for them to get called to Bethlehem by a census that was taken by Caesar Augustus and... For them to be in a, in a different place. I mean, so if it wasn't scary enough for Mary and Joseph having this baby, but then for them to be in a completely yes. different place without necessarily like their family members, without, right. and to have like no room in the inn. And I think like, you know, a lot of times like we kind of imagine, you know, our own kind of like hotel system, motel system. So we're like, I don't know how it's possible that there's no room, but really like how it worked back then is um, like when, when people live, live this is kind of what we've learned from experiencing Israel and stuff like that is that people would have like kind of like a back room that was kind of like where guests could stay and things like that. And people would pay to like kind of stay in people's back rooms or in sure. their, or, you know, cause mm -hmm. it was kind of attached to their house. So, but they get to Bethlehem and there is no room anywhere, like no room whatsoever in anybody's houses. And so they don't even have like kind of this sense of, Hey, there's safety or warmth. I mean, like you think about that and, and, you know, we don't know exactly what time of year this was. I mean, right. I think there's probably some kind of sp pretty strong speculation that this was April, you know, when this app actually happened, mm -hmm. but who knows exactly? I mean, so, I mean, I just can, I, I can see where Mary and Joseph, like they had to be questioning and they had to be saying, God, have we messed up somehow? Like, yeah. have we failed somehow? Like, are you even here? Why would you do this to us? Right. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I would have been like, really, God? This doesn't make sense Why whatsoever. Me? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Lord, we said yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, have you ever had those times in your life where you're like, okay, Lord, you've asked me to do this. Um, I feel this. there's something inside of me saying, do this. And so I'm going to say yes, right? Mm -hmm. And And then we kind of have this expectation of then how God actually is supposed to work. Like, if we say yes to him and we say, Lord, I give you my life, I give you my dreams, I give you my future, I give you my relationships, I give you my family, don't you think that you're also kind of like, okay, now I've given this to you. Now, here's what I kind of expect to happen. And then it doesn't happen. And then we're kind of left saying, what is wrong with you, God, or what is wrong with me? <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember in 2000, was it nine? Yeah, 19 was a good year, but it was my year of yes. 
And then this year happened, and I'm like, well, I kept saying yes, but it's been really sucky. Whereas in 2019, it was really great every time I said yes to the Lord and what he had for me. Because, like, what did you say yes to? I said yes to moving to Spain. I said yes to moving to Washington, D.C. I said yes to going to, on all these trips. I said yes to forgiving people I didn't want to forgive. It was just a bunch of different things. And then this year happened, and I've continued to say yes, but I've had expect, my expectations haven't been met. And so I was like, okay, 2021 is going to be my year of no, apparently, because <laughs> I'm so sick of saying yes and being let down, but obviously going to continue saying yes, right. but I really empathize with Mary in this. I can remember when I um, felt like the Lord was saying, I was at BSC and um, at Bismarck State College and um, really enjoyed my experience there. And then I can remember um, the Lord saying, Sam, I want you to go to this, to the large city of Minneapolis. I want you to go to this Bible school and I want you to go to this art school. And I can remember this morning, like walking and just talking to God and being like, I don't want to go to Minneapolis. I don't want to go to this art school. I don't <laughs> want to go to this Bible school, but fine. If you are telling me I have to go, like that's the yes, yeah. then I'll go. And then like, so I, I went to Minneapolis, went to this art school, went to this Bible school. And I can remember the day after Thanksgiving, it was a Friday night. And I was, I was in Minneapolis, hadn't been able to come home for Thanksgiving. And um, I remember a Friday night working on a Bible paper at like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And I can just remember, like I had called everybody in the city that I knew. I had called everybody. And I was like, don't, isn't there anybody that wants to do something, you know? Yeah. And I can remember being so angry with God and saying, God, like I said yes, and now I feel alone. Mm -hmm. I, I have you left me? Like, why would you allow me to go through this when I said yes to you? And so I was so angry with God that I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and I'm going to get like the worst looking tattoo or even worse, I'm going to go get like my nipple pierced, you know? And uh, <laughs> I've never heard this story. <laughs> so I seriously, I drive down to Lake Street because that's where all the tattoo parlors are, right? That's a lot of scary stuff down that street. Yeah. And there's, there's this man holding a sign saying, we'll work for food. And I remember driving past him and hearing God say, pick him up. <laughs> Did you so, say yes? I was so angry at God. I'm like, no way. I am not doing that, right? I go around the block. <laughs> I pick him up. I wasn't even very nice about it. I was just like, get in the car. You know? <laughs> oh my God. And he got in? I think I would have he, thought twice. He got in, you know? <laughs> he must have been pretty desperate. But uh, anyways, so like, I ended up taking him out for for dinner or something like that. And I can remember as he's telling me like his story, like my heart just kind of being like, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry that I was so focused on myself, so mm -hmm. focused on my own kind of sense of what I thought you were going to do that. I'm sorry that, you know, anyways, to make a long story short, I ended up paying for his rent for a month and saying, okay, I'll pay for your month for, uh, I'll pay for your rent for a month. If you'll go to church with me on Sunday. Well, on Sunday morning, I show up at his house. There's nobody there. And I knock on the door of, of this house. Basically, he was staying in a room of this house. I knock on the door of this house, and I keep on knocking, right? Because nobody answers. Well, finally, somebody yells out, out like a window. They're like, He's, he has a hangover, and he ain't coming. <laughs> this righteous indignation and anger like filled me up. I seriously, like I opened up the door. Oh, my God. <laughs> I marched upstairs. <laughs> Into this house that I mean, I, I had been there to pay the rent, you know, a, a couple nights before. I marched in, I marched into the room that I knew that he was in. And I opened up the door, he was sleeping, but I tore off the blankets. <laughs> I said, Get dressed, you're going to church with me. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, and he was angry, so he like throws his chair against the wall. I'm like, I don't care. You, you said. Wow. You would come to church with me if I if I paid your rent for the next month. And so, like, I brought him to church. And afterwards, he, he, he made this comment. He said, nobody has ever cared for me enough to make me do something. And I was just like, well, <laughs> I was actually probably a little bit surprised that I had done it myself. But. <laughs> I am now making a mental note to never falter on a deal made with Sam. <laughs> You never know what might happen. Jeez. It's like a covenant. Right, a covenant. It's a promise. <laughs> but I mean, like, in this story, I I think this is where 
uh, what I love about about scripture is that if we actually just kind of start to kind of take a look at it and say, okay, scripture, it gives us this, this story or this account, but it mm-hmm. doesn't include all the emotions. It doesn't include like what mm-hmm. they must have felt like. Mm-hmm. And I think that actually God does it on purpose because he says, whatever situation you're in, I want you to be able to, to look at these accounts and say, I bet you this person felt like this too. I mean, I just mm-hmm. think about Joseph and Mary and saying, what is going on? I don't get this. I don't understand this. And yet in that moment, in that moment of them being in that inn, or not, not having no room in the inn, being in a stable, like this, this place for the, the sheep, probably like a cave. I mean, can you just imagine like God doing the great, one of the greatest things in all of history in that humble moment? It totally makes sense that he would. Right. But uh-huh. the enemy never expected it. Yeah. So unexpected by everybody. By everybody. That God would do this in this way. Yeah. And isn't it cool that we have God's word so we can read it and we can know. That's why I can say with confidence, oh, that's so. Yeah, that's totally how God works. Right. And I have the advantage of having his word and knowing that, knowing the rest of the story. Yes. And I think it's really important for us during troubling times, especially like what we're going through right now. Absolutely. To go, you know what? The end of the story has already been written. Yeah. We do know the rest of the story. Yeah. We may not know every single detail of our own individual lives, but we do know that we win. Right. We know that there's this ending that is the best ending of all time. Yes. Yeah. So I just feel, some. I used to feel like, oh, how could they not see how obvious it is like that Jesus is doing miracles and he's the Savior? How can they not know that? Mm-hmm. Um, but now that I'm older and I'm walking out life, I can see how they missed it. Mm-hmm. And now I, I used to think, oh, they have it easier. But now I, I am older and wiser, I guess, and I still have a long ways to go to reach wise. But I can, I can look at God's word and go, oh, I have the advantage. Yeah, I know the whole story. I know the whole story. Yeah. They didn't, they couldn't see the whole story, which is why God's word is so important because we can. Yeah. And maybe not, not our own, the whole story of our own lives, but we can see God's overarching story. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think this uh, brings us to the conclusion of today. And um, Terry, would you mind saying a prayer for us as we close? I would love to pray. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the Lord of our lives, that you have written our story ahead of time that you have prepared us for all things, that you have gone before us, and that you have given us all of the tools that we need to walk in the ways that you have prepared, that we are never lacking, that you are always providing. And I just ask that during this Christmas season, that we would all ponder on your word, yes. that we would all think about your word and think about the truth that is there and remember that we win. Mm-hmm. And not be overwhelmed with what's going on in this world, but be overwhelmed with love Mm -hmm. that we see when we look at the faces of our loved ones. I thank you for this opportunity to spend time together with John and Ashley and Sam and with those who are listening. And I ask that you would just bring this into the hearts of those who are listening Mm -hmm. and that you would heal whatever needs to be healed that you would restore what needs to be restored in relationships, in um, businesses, in our communities, and in our world, and that your will would be done this Christmas season, and that we would run into 2021 with boldness and faith, knowing the rest of the story is written. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. (laughs) Thank you very much, Terry. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Jono. And thank you to each one of you for joining us today. We pray that you would experience God's love and blessing. And even in this tough stuff of your life, where you're asking these questions of why God, what's going on? I said yes, and it, this isn't making sense, that you would know that God has an incredible plan for you mm-hmm. and incredibly good things for you. May you also have a great time as you maybe have a vacation or a, a fun time with family or just a time of celebration with the Lord plan. Ashley, I hope you have a great time with your family in Jackson Hall. Have fun. And uh, maybe we should all go there sometime.
That sounds like a good plan. All. Let's start planning that right now. And may there be room for us all in the inn. Yes. God bless you. Have a great day.